the double jump, the game mechanic that can take stage design to a whole new level. Today we're going to look at how to implement this game mechanic by using the Bolt Visual Scripting add-on for the Unity Game Engine. You can get this asset free on the Unity Asset Store and while you're there you might want to pick up the free 2D platformer tutorial asset as well because we're going to be using it as a template for how to implement the double jump. If you don't know how the jump mechanic works in Bolt, I would encourage you to go watch my other video why the jump in your game sucks and how to fix it without code first because I cover how to get more control over your jump mechanic in detail. Additionally, if you're wanting to follow along step by step, then you're going to need to complete the tutorial first. I'll leave links in the description for how to do this from start to finish. I should probably warn you early though, giving ourselves the double jump mechanic with a ground check condition can be a little complicated. Our ground check mechanic doesn't allow us to jump again without the ray cast hitting the ground. So how can we implement this feature? Well, if you watch the previous videos I've done, you can probably see where this is going. Yet another player variable. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is add a variable to our player and let's call it uh, jump count. And this is going to be an integer because we're going to be subtracting from it. Uh, so let's set it to, you can either go up or you can go down depending on what you do. So you can add to the number or you can subtract from the number. We're just going to do subtract. Uh, you really have to decide what you want to put in here too. Do you want your player to have two jumps, three jumps, five jumps, ten jumps? How many jumps do you want them to have? Um, in which case that number is going to be set here, but we can always change it later. Okay, the next thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to take our existing jump that we already have and let's move it down to the bottom just give ourselves a little bit more room to work with this because we're going to be adding uh, a few things to this and hopefully this will go pretty easily okay so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to say when we jump we're going to need to subtract one from our jump count so let's uh, run off the end of our add force um, and let's do set object variable and um, we're going to get our oops not our speed we're going to get our jump count and we're going to subtract subtract one from that count so the way that we're going to do that is we're going to go over here we're going to do get variable get object variable and uh, jump count and run that into A, and so when we jump, uh, we are going to subtract one. So make that an integer. We're just going to subtract one from our jump count. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to reset our variable back to two whenever we're grounded. So what we're gonna do to do that is we're just gonna break this little link right here, and we're going to make a set variable set object variable jump count to two so do the integer literal set that back to two whenever grounded is true then we'll just run that right back into our jump whenever grounded is true then we're going to reset that integer back to two now whatever you set this to here you need to make sure you set it here too so a good way to keep track of that let me uh, kind of extend this out and we can move that up just a little bit. And just to make sure I don't lose track of this, I'm actually gonna make another little grouping for this one. And I'm gonna call this jump count. And I will leave that black so it kind of stands out on the, the green. I don't know, maybe you've got a better color for that. Um, so uh, essentially what this is gonna do is that every time I'm grounded, it's going to reset my jump count back to two and I'll be able to jump. Okay, so there's one more necessary component in this for this to work properly. Um, we need to say that if we are not grounded, but we also have some jump count left, then we should be able to jump. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're going to run uh, off the false statement of grounded, and we're going to actually make another branch, another true false statement here. And the information that we're going to plug into that, we're going to say get variable, get object variable, um, get object variable jump count. And if this is greater than 
or equal to one, then you can jump. So when we test this out, you should notice that you do get two jumps, but it's a little finicky and I think we can do better than that. The reason why it doesn't look right is because, um, yeah, it is subtracting from that jump count and it's never actually resetting it to two because it's subtracting from two when you jump. So it's doing its job. You are still able to get two jumps and you can adjust that number if you like uh, later on down the road, give it more jumps. But if you notice, the, the jump is not really getting the same height. Uh, and it just, I don't know, it just doesn't feel right. And the reason why is because the momentum is pulling it downwards. And if you remember, with our jump, we're just adding force back up into it. So if it has force coming down and force going back into it, you have this kind of like this little stall. Uh, and it just doesn't look right. So I actually got two jumps off there, but it didn't bounce him back up. And so the way that we're gonna fix this is actually pretty easy. Okay, first things first, things are starting to look a little bit sloppy. So I'm gonna try to clean this up just a little bit and hopefully we can get this arranged so that we don't uh, lose track of what we have here. So let's, uh, let's just grab this little window and let's stretch it down, make sure we got everything in there. Okay, and let's come over to the right. Uh, the way that we're actually gonna fix this is that when we jump, and we have jumps left to jump with, uh, we're going to want to reset the velocity on the Y back to zero. And the way that we're going to do that is by breaking this little branch here. And what that's going to do um, is we're going to need to uh, set velocity 2D we're gonna have to set the X and the Y back to zero whenever we jump. So what that's going to do, like I said, is it's going to uh, make sure that you're not moving downwards when you're jumping anymore. So that, that pulling down action shouldn't actually happen. So it doesn't matter where you are in the jump fall, you still get a second jump out of it. Okay, so the last thing that we need to do is just make sure that we save this to our player prefab and it saves all the way across our levels. You do that by go up to override and uh, hit apply all um, and you should be all set up. Again, if you wanna change the number of jumps that you have here, you just uh, go to that jump count. Let's say if I wanted it to be three, make sure in your player controller that you also change it here. This is not gonna do much good. You're only gonna get three the first time uh, if you do it that way. So let's just check and make sure that we have three instead of two jumps. And uh, we should be, let's see, one, so one, two, three. All right, one, two, three. All right, we're good to go. And you only get three, awesome. Okay, so hopefully your player now has enough jumps to get across that chasm. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Maybe your player controller still isn't quite set up the way you want it to be. Does your player need a sprint function? Surely somebody has made a video for that.